Hey everyone, it's Joe Blinds here with Isaiah from The Automator. And we were actually working on this really cool script for helping people with their auto hotkey code. And we're accessing different editors. And if you don't have a default editor that we're going to detect, we're going to do one thing. But if we can detect it, like if you're using AutoHotKey Studio or Notepad++ or a site for AutoHotKey, we want to programmatically jump to a line. Exactly. Right? We're doing very interesting stuff with them. Yeah. And this touched on, we were doing stuff with Studio using Scintilla. Scintilla yeah. Control, yes, that's yeah. right. And then I said, hey, let's, you know, let's take a look at it with Sight as well. And, you know, I was a, I still use Sight a lot, just not for programming and auto hotkey, but it's a great default editor. And this is where, and it's kind of ironic because Isaiah apparently hasn't really been a Sight user. But, yeah. uh, and this is where it gets really interesting is, remind me, like you built a Scintilla Control or you built a wrapper for it or something? Is that right? A wrapper for it. Yeah, that's right. So so a long time ago, when the Scintilla control was there, I wanted to access it via auto hotkey. You can, there was a wrapper, but it was kind of like uh, limited in scope of what it was doing. So I decided to just do it again with more options and so on. Uh, so basically what you're doing is you, cr you grab a, a DLL file, which is the Scintilla library. That gives you access to all the functions that are going to be used by that control. And then later on, I just put uh, functions in our hotkey that you can call to go ahead and access those functions that the library has. And let me throw out some more, because here you told me a couple minutes ago, I was trying to wrap my brain around a scintilla control. I've heard the term or I've heard scintilla so used so many times, but I never could put my finger on it. But it's basically like the editor, you know, a GUI or you said a control with like a button and the edit field. But that's a, you know, it's so, a complex... So Right. So people get really confused when when you talk in a little bit more technical terms about controls and windows. Basically, they are the same thing. Mm -hmm. A control. Yeah, me, I got really confused. Uh, uh, yeah, like, so, so, yeah, it was very, it, it is uh, 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 confusing, but a control is a window. Mm -hmm. It's a type of window. And usually those, so, and it has all the properties that a normal window has, right? The only thing is that they look a little bit differently and they answer to specific things. Like for example, a button, when you click on it, it receives the message that you clicked and it actually answers a different message that tells you that the button was clicked or the state of the button and so on, which a main GUI does not have those weird things. So again, okay. in general, in general, uh, 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 the idea is a window and a button are the same thing. The only difference is that a button is a specialized window. And that's what a control is. A control yeah. is a series of layered windows to look in a specific way. And they have spe a specialized uh, uh, way of working. Now, the Scintilla control is exactly the same as an edit control. Uh, I'm just generalizing here. The idea is that it is a control. It is not like, a, it's not a program. It is not it is just a control, and that control receives messages and answers with messages the same way as any other control does. Now, it is built in a way that if you send a specific message, like for example, show, it will actually display a window in which you can type. <laughs> so that's why it is confusing to many people, like what is going on? Is it a window? Is it a program? No, it's not a window. It is a control. Now. We don't have to go into too much detail about that. The, 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 the one thing is, like, how do I use it? Then and, hold on. I'd like to clarify a couple other terms to help us digest where we're going. HK Studio uses a scintilla control. Site for Auto Hotkey uses yes. scintilla control. Does, I don't remember. Does Notepad++? Plus Plus? Yes. Okay. So all three of these yes, use scintilla well. control. So their GUI is the same thing. It's not a Windows GUI. It's a scintilla control, you know, whatever. Then and, and, and that's the thing. So 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 I'm sorry. So yeah. the scintilla control is one box and nothing else. That's it. Now the tabs that you use on the top, okay. the menus that you're using, they are creating those with their languages that they use. So right. uh, Node plus plus is using C plus plus. Uh, uh, Studio is using Auto Hotkey to create the right. tabs. But the box in the middle, that control, yeah, okay. that one. Yeah, that's the one that we're referring to as the Scintilla control. And that was where I was just going to say also for Cypher Auto Hockey, that was where you were telling you to go Lua, L-U-A, is 
a scripting language that that helps you know do some of that stuff. That is a is a programming language. That's right. So it is a programming language that uh, it is being used inside. Uh, I, I cannot say how much of yeah, site right. is written with Lua, but it, it has some uses on it. And there's a part of it that they allow you to access that language as well for you and, to actually program stuff in it. And to add on to this, just a general conversation, because this, when I was talking to Tank the other day, both Studio and Site for Auto Hotkey, and probably just Site in general, has a COM object that you can use to connect to those programs and you know do stuff with, you know, it's kind of like a translator, but you can connect to and do stuff with. So you don't have to program in Lua for Cypher Auto Hotkey if, you know, you can do some things without that, right? But, exactly. Yeah. And, sorry, because that was where we were, we were touching on with the website that we're going to hear a show in a minute. Some of the commands, this, this is where I get still get a little fuzzy. This until it, I want to say commands, but I don't know if that's the right term. Because we were looking at some functions as well. Um, and then for site, yeah, there was the actually... Thing. So, so, so that's where it gets a little bit fuzzy because you yeah. have to... So you usually what people do is that they just refer to the genital term, right? Okay. So they look like commands. They act as commands or functions, however you want. Yeah. But if you want to be technical about them, they are not commands or functions. They are messages. You see when, when uh, you send okay. the send message, yeah. you use the send message and post message. Yeah. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning, right. uh, controls, controls, they react to window messages. That's what they do, all of the controls. So the edit control yeah. has a list of messages. Yeah. And actually, let me, let me go ahead and uh, for those who are not really kind of like uh, having yeah. in mind, yeah. let me show you right. on my screen. Like, there is something that I, uh, in the AutoHotKey, uh, for example, in the AutoHotKey documentation, you could search for window messages uh, right. here. And you get a list of messages that can be sent with post and send, right? And you, you see these guys like WM activate, they have a number. If you using the send message command, send that number to a window, it would activate the window, you see? But, and here's the thing, a control, for example, you could set the set focus command, right? And that would make that control have the focus. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do. There's some messages, for example, an edit control might get some messages that a button control will just simply sure. ignore. Because right. again, they are specialized for something. Now, the same happens with Scintilla. All of these messages, some of them like set focus or activate, you might actually send that message to that control and it will, it will, it will respond to it. But beside those messages, it, you can find a list of the messages that it actually answers to. And if you go here, for example, you see the copy, cut, copy, paste, these it's, three uh, messages. The, the screen delay is very delayed. So there we go. Okay. Now it um, um, I was on the other page. I'm like, yeah, uh, that's not, not what you're talking about. Okay. No, 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 no. So, so basically, yep. uh, I'm, I'm not sure why there's such a delay right now, but basically these three messages here, like cut, copy, paste, yeah. are messages that the Scintilla control understands. But notice that this one says SCI in there, right? right? Because the number for that message is a little bit different than the one that you can find in here. I think you can find the cut here. You see this WN cut, copy and paste? Yeah. You see the number for it? So this number, if you send it to the Scintilla control, it might ignore it because it says like, no, 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 no. If you want to send me the cut command, you have to actually send me the one that I define. In, in my case, it would be SCI cut. Now, the reason why people think about these guys as commands or functions is because they are defined here or presented here as such, which is copy range, and it allows you two parameters, start and end. You see that? And it looks a lot like a function. It has parentheses and everything. Right. So it looks like a function. And that's why we could use it interchangeably here. Yep. But in the end, if you want to be very specific, 
This is not really a command or a function. This is actually a message number. And those two parameters are the L param and W param for the send message. So I watched your video 10 years ago, probably on send message and post. Dude, I think you did have broke them up or because that was when YouTube couldn't have long videos, remember, right? And that you yes, naturally broke exactly, them Exactly, yes. But really, and, really yeah. good job. This is a long time ago that you did them, but it's obviously nothing's changed, right? Um, if you're not familiar no, with no, it's the same post messages, right? It's really good. The other right. thing I, I wanted to point out was like, if you watch that video, you'll see just how many freaking messages are happening. It's insane, like on a working computer. Right. Even with doing nothing, it's it's crazy because you're like, how do I filter this? Because like it's just it's faster than you can see, like all the messages. Right. It's crazy. It is complicated. But uh, so long as you know what you're doing, you, you will be fine. Yep. Now, again, the idea that I want to kind of like drive home here is you see that the send message command has this message and then it says W param and right. L param. Right. right. Now, Scintilla. And, and in Auto Hotkey, then you have to specify the control, the window title, and those kind of things. Yeah. But Scintilla, as you're talking about the control itself, you don't have to specify the control because it knows what control it is. Right? We're already now, in, yeah. we, we don't have to use the word send message because uh, that's what you're doing anyways. Right. But yeah. now you have these three things. You have yeah. the message number, the parameter, and the two parameters. That's exactly what you're looking at right here. Copy range. SCI copy range is the message number. And position start and position ends would be the W param and L param. So if you actually send message like this and just imagine that this SCI cut, you have the number for it, which I have in, in, a, in, a, in a value. So if you send that to the Cintilla control, it would actually answer to it. Yeah, and and this is where the other day, in the video with, I did with Tank, where he was talking about com objects in general, and then during that video, he said like, you know, everything breaks down to well, not everything, but you know, most things break down to a, a send or post message, you know, that you can do, and you can automate, you know, a ton of stuff. Right, of course, because the, so long as you're sending the, the right messages and the control understands that message, then you're good to go. It's going to answer to it. Well, actually, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but virtually everything mm -hmm. else that we are doing, especially like with AutoHotKey or even with the comma, they are simply a wrapper for doing the send and post message. Is that correct? Like that is what they, they end up doing. They translate it into sending, you know, doing a send or post message in the end. Or, or maybe there's some well, other... Well, I, I do, I do uh, understand that there's a lot of things that have to do with the GUIs particularly that are going to be translated into messages okay. in the end. Yeah, maybe not everything. There are some things that, no, yeah, so I was gonna say like, there's a lot of things that are actually low level uh, function calls okay. that, you know, those DLL calls. Yeah. So right. everything you do in Auto Hotkey actually boils down to a low level DLL call in the end uh, without you knowing. Um, but God. in the end, there's a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in the end, there's a lot of things that, yeah. uh, they do are they, they are messages if it is for a GUI. Now going back to Scintilla in this case, right. everything you see is a message. The only thing is that here they're just mentioning the name of the message, but those messages are defined as numbers uh, somewhere. I actually remember having it from the source code, yeah. which you can actually download because it is there, so you can yeah. get it. But um, uh, after you have the source code that has all the definitions for the messages. Then you just send messages. Um, and if you are using the Scintilla wrapper, uh, you will notice that you could do some things like this, in which uh, my Scintilla wrapper, you could use the Scintilla object and just put the message number as a function, right? So you could use it as a function. You use the Scintilla number as a function and you just pass parameters to it, right. and it will just work fine, right? right. So. Um, that is what Maestrist was doing here. He was just using this until a number. This number could be translated exactly to something like go to, which right. is what we were doing here. This right. is a go to. This here is go to line and then set the selection to that line. I could guarantee it. Uh, basically, the one here is going to that line and then when it, it goes to that line, then it sets the selection to it. That's what it's doing. 
Um, because when we run the script, you notice that it jumps to the line and then it selects the whole line as well. So now I now would assume back, that that's what he Tying a little bit back now and more into site, can you go back to some of those web pages that I had originally given you? So we can, like I said, years ago when I was really into site, um, I had mm -hmm. you know, updated my user properties file a lot using some of these commands. So there was this page. Okay, so the, this is the command here. So I'm yep. gonna jump to the command page now and you have this menu, menu commands, right? Right. It, well, actually, okay. you know, earlier when we were talking about this, I didn't see that that says right there, menu commands. That, and I was telling you right. that where I updated my menus right up above, I can yes, play. exactly. And then down here, you see the key commands. Now, I'm not sure if key command means like a hot key that you can press and it sends a message. I don't know. Yeah, that's the weird part, right? It doesn't. So, so, so yeah, I, I would say that because this is the tab. You see this yeah. tab? Yeah. It would actually send something. It would send the indentation or whatever. But in the end, what we do see is that you see these numbers here on the left, right? And they are the command. And basically, again, uh, it boils down to not a command. It is actually a message. This is a message that will be sent. That's what happens. Now, now that's what I think. I am not really sure, but that would be the command that would be used with send message. And the other thing, this is what you, you pointed out. And the second you said it, I'm like, Okay, I get it. On this page, we're on the scintilla, you know, .org commands, but the other page up to the right, I think, is the site, the, the tab to the right. That was the site you command. Know, so, 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 so here, again, these two pages, this, this one that I have open right now and the one on the right, they both belong to site. Okay, thank you. So they are both for site. See, that's right? what yeah, was now, confusing the me. Less one, yeah, the less one, yeah, so this one is for scintilla, right? Yes. So, yeah, that's what I, well, anyway, that's, that's why I, I believe that's what I was saying. Yeah. Um, so, and that was where I was getting confused with, but wait a minute, you know, if, if uh, auto hockey studio is a scintilla control, I can use these things. No, those are site commands that are tied yeah. to site, probably <laughs> using Lua, but we maybe don't know, but, um, and that's yeah. why those don't work. Right. Um, in that sense. Right. So, so these, these group of commands that you see here, uh, on top of the Scintilla uh, messages that you can see in the Scintilla documentation, the ones that we were talking about. So on top of those, the Scintilla editor has its own uh -huh. messages uh -huh. that when it gets it, it would perform some Scintilla things. So it's kind of like abstracting some of the work. So for example, the new command has nothing to do with the Scintilla editor. So the new command actually creates a new file. It blanks the Scintilla editor. Yep. Probably it opens a new tab, okay? So it opens a new tab. It creates a new Scintilla component that you, could, that you will work on. It would blank it if it has any information. It does a lot of things just with this one command. Now, if you want to do that with the Scintilla control, you would have to do all that. You would have to create a new tab. You would have to create a new Scintilla component. You would have to blank it if it has something. You have to send the commands yourself. They just made it easy for you. So that if you yeah. just send the new you know command, it would, do, it would do all that right there. Yeah, I get you. I mean, at least here, right, what, what you're showing, right above that, it says site menu commands, right? However, yes. your yes. title uh, for the tab says scintilla, you know, dot org commands. Maybe it says like, you know, um, sites. Oh, and, right. Yeah, I, I see it. Yeah. So scintilla.org is the website of it. And, and this page, even though it is in scintilla.org, it is actually referring to the site That's why uh, itself. So it is, really it is kind of confusing. Yes. Yeah, it is. Now, there's a couple other terms that earlier you and I were talking about we haven't covered in this video yet. There was the Luxor, right? Right. And that was explained to me again. That's, that is the, the Luxor is the highlighting. So that is, there's this, right. So the scintilla component, um, the main uh, use for it is the fact that you can make different colors mm -hmm. depending on the word that you have selected, right? So, and basically that's the whole purpose of the scintilla control. If it didn't have that, then it would be the same as using Notepad, right? Because Notepad, you, you cannot color sure. words based on keywords, right? 
Now the Scintilla Control here, uh, it allows you to create a uh, set send uh, folding. It has uh, markers and other things that you can define by, you have to actually code the lexer yourself and then incorporate it into the Scintilla Control. Now, this is kind of like a little bit more advanced, but the lexers, they are moving to something else called Lexila now. This thing is kind of like they're separating the Scintilla Control from the lexers so that the Scintilla Control just simply can respond to different lexers in a better way. Maybe that's what they're doing. Right. Now, uh, but in general, the lexer is just kind of like, think about them as functions. Functions that go ahead and read your file and for each word or letter or number, they categorize them in ways so that then the scintilla control says, okay, so if that letter is that category, I would put this number. Yeah. yeah so, so, so the, the lexer is just a part, uh, it's different than the scintilla control in the sense that it just categorizes everything. It just That's tokenizes exactly. everything. The lexer is like processing and making, resolving it to something. And then the scintilla control says, oh, you have this thing. I know what to do with that thing. I just do this. Exactly. So that That's process. exactly it. And then I thought exactly. I so remember. the scintilla. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that's exactly why they're kind of like splitting them apart. Now you have the lexila outside of the scintilla control because mm. the scintilla control is just basically the part that actually is gonna show the colors or show uh, the folding. And that's it. But the lexer is the one doing the hard work of going ahead and reading the file and deciding, okay, this is actually a variable. This is actually a function based on what you defined it as, right? I've heard, I know from talking to you for a long time and with Maestria talking about the scintilla control, it's always been of interest to me, but I, I'm like, I don't understand what, you know, I never asked like, well, wait, what is that? And now I have, at least have a better understanding of it. In general, just think about it as it is an edit control. The only thing is that it allows you to do a lot of things that the edit control does not allow you to. And this is part of one thing of the, the things that we were actually talking about that I mentioned uh, a, a while ago, we should find a great control. Right now, the auto hotkey script, you have access to the Windows list view control. Mm -hmm. Now the list view control is a great control, but that control is very limited in what it can do, okay? So you cannot put an image on the second column. You have to put it at the beginning of the column, in the first column. You cannot put a check mark on the third column, it has to be at the beginning as well. And certain other limitations like that, for example, you cannot drag and drop easily. You have to somehow code that yourself. But if there is a control, like the Scintilla control, if there's a control out there that has to do with grid controls, then that would be a better alternative for you to, when you're creating programs. And the concept would be exactly the same. It is a control that you can actually do very advanced stuff and probably simpler than if you were using the default Windows control. That it is just limited in scope. It is just for having a basic awesome. <laughs> it does, remember, as your starting point, right? And I remember when it was a while ago now, you and I were talking and I showed you a tool built in auto hotkey that someone had created a regex match thing, you know, and I was highlighting it and you're like, well, they're, you know, right. they're only doing one color. And you're like, oh, it'd be really easy to add multiple colors on the different matches and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, okay. How would you, um, do, yeah, like, how would you do that? Well, it would be really kinda, easy if you have a control that does that, right? <laughs> right, right. Now I'm kind of exactly how it's it's not crazy. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. It's not Thank crazy you. so long as you do that, right? So yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> your, your other things are doing the heavy lifting. You just need to understand how to feed it, right? How to how to tell exactly. That's right. Tell the control. These are the the right colors for that thing. And and so that's what exactly. Uh, when you're doing a certain theme also for certain things, you're just saying, hey, for these things that are defined this way, use that color. And Yep. yep. <laughs> That's exactly right. Cool. That's the same thing. Awesome. Well, thanks for walking us through that. All right. Okay. And if you guys cool. have any questions, add them, you know, add them on here and we'll, we'll try to answer them. Cheers. Yep. Don't forget, if you go to the above URL, you can sign up for my newsletter. I set out weekly alerts, things dealing with automation and auto hotkey.